Okay, we're still doing examples of sketching a root locus by hand. Um, and I keep, I'm gonna keep referring to a formula sheet because I don't wanna keep going back to this. Here's the formulas, all I believe all the formulas we need to sketch root locus by hand. Uh, the example we're gonna do in this video is one that requires where, where this Q here, how many times a pole or zero is repeated is more than one. Uh, and all the other examples, these cues were ones. And you can actually fall back to a simpler um, formula where these cues could go away because they're one. And then this L would only go to one. So these 360 degrees things go away. You have simpler formulas. But in this case, we're about to do, we're going to need these more complicated formulas. Um, and it's going to be in this configuration, as several of our examples have been and will be. The G and H in question are already monic or have monic numerators and monic denominators. So that the L required for root locus is just the product of G and H, and K is the parameter of interest. Now let's go to the example we're going to do. Um, this is primarily a repeated pole problem. So we're really, here's, here's the formulas from the formula sheet. And in our case, the repeated, it's a pole that's repeated. So we're gonna need this formula especially. Remember some labor saving trips for departure angles? Um, you could ignore complex pairs. Well, if you're talking about real poles or real zeros, Ignore complex pairs that cancel. Ignore poles and zeros to the left of the pole or zero in question. And a pair of pole, a pole and a zero on the same side of the pole in question will cancel each other out. Um, so here's the example. The, here's the G, here's the H. L is the product of both of these. So L's poles will be the combination of these poles. Zero, zero, and minus three. So a double pole at the origin. And the only zero is at minus one. So N, the number of poles is three. M is one, the number of zeros. N minus M is two. And from that, we know we're gonna get three branches of root locus. And N minus M is two is how many asymptotes? Go back to the formula sheet. We have two, it's straight up and straight down, one vertical line. Um, we're here with step zero where you just plot the poles and zeros. Here's a double pole at the origin. Um, another one at minus three and a zero at minus one, right? So that's step zero. Where is it on the real line? Well, there's zero to the right over here. So that's an even number, so nothing there. Here we just add two, it's still an even number. Once we get to this zero, we have three things to the right, one pole and two zeros. So it's on the real line left at this zero up until you get to this pole, and then you have four things to the right. So right here is the only place between that pole and that zero is the only place it's on the real line. Um, the asymptote is going to be a vertical line. Where does it cross? We go back to the formula sheet. I'm not going to go through that calculation, but it crosses the real line at minus one. So there is the asymptote. We can be, I, I'm going to say, we can be sure the root locus doesn't cross the imaginary axis into the right half plane. Why? because what attracts the root locus are zeros and asymptotes. They're all in, in the left half plane and they start at most right on the imaginary axis. So there's nothing drawing the root locus to the right. Everything's drawing it to the left. Um, so now let's get to the departure. 
So here is for the departure angle of the pole. First, we'll look at the double poles on the origin. Oops, I'm going to leave it away there. We're looking at these guys. Well, these other guys are to the left, so we can ignore everything else. So everything in this formula except this part goes away. So we have the minus 180, and then L goes from one to two. When L equals one, this is just zero. So we just get the minus 180. That's not the departure angle. That's two times the departure angle. So the departure angle is just minus 180 divided by two or minus 90. For the other repeated pole, we just let it's everything the same except this L will be two. So we get two minus one or one minus 360. So I have minus 180 minus 360, which is minus 540. By that by two, you get minus 270, which is just 90 degrees plus 90. So coming out of that double pole, the departure angles are straight up and straight down, plus or minus 90. Uh, let's see, what about the left pole? Well, let's see, the zero, that's 180 from the zero. And both, both these guys are also 180. So it's this 180 due to the zero and minus two times the 180 due, due to the double poles. Uh, I, I get everything which is ultimately zero. So the departure angle of the left pole is straight right. Here to the right. Um, and the zero is gonna be the same thing. I'm not gonna go through that calculation. It'll be a line, um, 180, but that's where it comes in. So you can kind of imagine this pole is probably gonna go right into that zero. I'm, I want to stop. You could think something. Well, there's. let's go through a couple alternatives. These guys go straight up and straight down. They might just go right to the S and jump, while this pole goes from there to the zero, and everything's simple. Sometimes you got to look out for strange things happen. You could have this guy come up and around. This guy, the mirror image up and around while this guy's moving right. And then the two poles would break away going up the asymptote and down the asymptote and you'd still have one going to the zero. To make sure that doesn't happen, we'll use rule six. Um, so, so thinking it's not going to happen, we'll go with our first option and say and here is our root locus sketched by hand. And when we check with MATLAB, it confirms it's approved. Um, I'm really not gonna go through rule five. We already said it really can't happen. If you go through the Ruth Ray thing, there's no positive K that's gonna make anything in this left, this first column be a zero. When K exactly equals zero, you get a zero there. And that's just that original double pole. Let's look at rule six. Oops, here we go. Um, I won't go through the formula sheet. This up here is what's on the formula sheet. Um, we apply it, we end up getting this. Remember, it, it, a necessary condition, maybe not sufficient, just because this would have real roots doesn't guarantee break in, break out points. But they can only be, the break in, break out points can only be at the roots of this equation. Uh, with derivative of L zero. This S, that's one root. S equals zero, that's one root. That's just where the, double pole is. We know we're going to get breakout points there. 
the rest of this, this does not have real roots. You have to have real roots uh, for this to work. So if there's no re other real roots, there's no other break in, break out points. That would pretty much guarantee that these guys don't come back around and back into there. And we can go with this scale. We'll do an example a little, probably in the next video, where that screwy stuff actually can happen. Um, and we'll save that for another video.